so the next topic of module 1 is operational amplifier okay so under operational amplifier you have four subdivisions one is operational amplifier parameters uh, then characteristics its configurations and the op amp circuits okay so before going on to the topic let us uh, learn about what is meant by an operational amplifier so basically the operational amplifier is an integrated circuit so it's an integrated circuit that amplifies a weak signal okay the schematic symbol is given as it has two input terminals and one output terminals okay so this will be your v1 this will be your input 2 and you have a v out so what is meant by integrated circuit it is nothing but an electronic device with a large number of active and passive components right so the ic can be mainly divided into two types one is your digital and the other one is linear ic so what is meant by a digital ic it works on uh, it processes the inputs high and low or one and zero right digital inputs whereas the linear ic's operate on your uh, analog dc as well as ac signal okay so this is called as this is op amp is one of the example of your linear ic okay so uh, your op amp operates both uh, dc and uh, ac signals so so why is it called as an operational amplifier because it makes uh, mathematical operations it does the mathematical operations such as addition subtraction differentiation integration etc that's why it is called as operational amplifier okay now uh, what are the uh, different applications applications uh, are maybe audio and radio uh, communication in medical audio radio communication medical application then instrumentation and control so these are some of the applications of your linear ic okay again the linear ic can be divided into two types one is called as your general purpose and other one is called as your special purpose okay general purpose so one of the popular ic is mu a for uh, 741 ic okay so example for a special purpose is lm380 uh, so these are some of the fundamentals uh, or some of the basic things about your operational amplifier so mainly you are going to concentrate on its parameters characteristics configurations and circuits okay so now before going on to the topic we have to uh, uh, know what are the important uh, properties of your op amp so let me take the equivalent circuit of an app op amp okay so this is your equivalent circuit of op amp so as I have mentioned before, it consists of two terminals, input terminals. One is your uh, inverting input terminal and the other one is your non-inverting input terminal. So it has an internal resistance of Ri. Let me take this as plus. And you have in your output, you have a voltage source along with your output resistance. So let me take it as R0 and AV. So this will be your V0, okay? So this is your input terminal V1 and this is your non-inverting input terminal V2, okay? Now, what will be the output? This is your amplifier which has a gain. Let me assume the gain as A. Now, op amp is nothing but which amplifies the input signal or it strengthens the input signal to a higher value, okay? Now, What's the difference here is here the operational amplifier amplifies the difference between both the signals. See you have two inputs right. So what will be your output V0 will be equal to A into your gain into V1 minus V2. That is the difference between the two input signal. Okay since you have two input signal. Now what is the use of uh, two input signal one is inverting and the other one is non-inverting. The name itself signifies the meaning. If it is an in, inverting uh, input terminal, then if the input is given to the in, inverting input terminal, the output is going to be inverting, inverted signal of your input signal means what? It will come as 180 degree phase shift. Okay. It signifies the phase shift. So, 
if the input is given across the inverting terminal uh, then the output will be suppose if input is negative positive negative then the output will be 180 degree pressure that is during positive you will be getting negative during negative you will be getting positive whereas if the input is given across your non-inverting input what will be your output there is no it is it will be in phase if positive during the positive half cycle so this will be your output during positive half cycle your output will also be positive during the negative half cycle your output will also be negative there is no phase shift okay so here in this case there is 180 degree phase shift this is the difference between the two uh, input signal that is the inverting and the non-inverting signal okay now now let us go on to the various parameters op amp parameters so so mainly you are going to study seven different op amp parameters okay so let me draw the diagram once again so internal resistance ri so v1 v2 then you have your voltage source with your output resistance this will be your input resistance inverting terminal non inverting terminal this will be your v out okay so what are the different seven different parameters so your first parameter is your open loop voltage gain voltage gain so here i have left the two important parameter that is your plus vcc and minus vcc this these are the supply voltages okay so open loop voltage gain so first one is your open loop voltage gain so what is meant by voltage gain so if this uh, op amp is having a gain of av open loop voltage gain is the voltage gain of an operational amplifier without feedback so there is no feedback right without feedback so i can tell that it is an open loop there is no closed path okay so it is uh, designated as a v open loop ol is equal to so you know that voltage gain is nothing but equal to output voltage divided by input voltage so what is the condition the condition is there is no feedback so this is your formula for your open loop voltage gain normally the open loop voltage gain will be a very high value okay the value ranges from 10 power 5 to 10 power 6 okay so the value is approximately equal to 10 power 5 okay the second one is called as closed loop voltage gain so now what will be your closed loop voltage gain it will be the voltage gain with the feedback so if i include a feedback here such voltage gain is called as closed loop voltage gain okay so it is given by the so this will be with feedback okay so what will be uh, your uh, formula a b closed loop so let me take it as a b c l is equal to again it is given by output voltage divided by input voltage with feedback okay so this is the difference between the both okay so here the uh, closed loop voltage gain is very less and it is approximately equal to one to several thousand okay now the third one is called as your input resistance input resistance so what is meant by the input resistance input resistance will be equal to your input voltage by input current right so this is your input resistance r if i take it as r i in it will be the ratio of input voltage to input current so i can write it as r in is equal to v in divided by i in so this will be your resistance of input resistance okay normally the input resistance one of the very important characteristic feature is high input impedance or high input resistance so it is very very high high input resistance it is approximately in the value of 2 mega ohm to 10 raised to 12 ohm okay so this is your third one 
Now after input resistance what will be your fourth one? It will be output resistance. So output resistance will be the opposite of your input resistance. I will tell you why. what is the reason why your input resistance is high and output resistance is more. So output resistance will be given as if I take this as R out will be given as output voltage divided by your output current. Right? This will be your formula. Now output resistance will be very very less. Okay? So it is less decreased value. So it will be approximately in the value of 10 ohm to 100 ohm. So this is your fourth parameter. Now your fifth parameter is your fifth parameter is your input offset voltage. So what is your input offset voltage? Okay. So here you have two inputs right one is your V1 and V2 and you have one output. Suppose if both the inputs are zero you should get V out should also be equal to zero. So V out will be equal to A into V1 minus V2. If both are zero A into zero you should get it as zero but practically it is not the case because due to some circuit imbalance there will, there will be some drop across means there will be some voltage present. So you have to before working of the circuit you have to make sure that both the input voltages are uh, zero. Okay. So uh, you have to add some compensation to the or input of the compensation voltage to the input that is called as input offset voltage or I can define that the voltage applied to the input to make output as zero. Okay. That is called as input offset voltage. It is usually in the range of approximately equal to 1 millivolt to 15 millivolt. It is very very less. Okay. Now. So this is your fifth one. Now two more is left. Your sixth one will be. So I am writing here your sixth one. Sixth one is your full power bandwidth. So what is meant by full power bandwidth? Okay. It is nothing but your uh, range of frequency where you have your maximum gain. Okay. So just similar to that of your normal amplifier. So if this is your frequency response. So what will be your uh, 3D minus 3dB will be the point if I take it as AV max. If this is your AV max, this is your frequency. Okay. Now if it is, uh, if your maximum value is AV max. What will be a minus 3 dB which is 0.707 into AV max right. So here you will be getting two cutoff frequency one is your FL and the other one is FH. So bandwidth will be equal to FH minus FL or the operating frequency or your voltage gain is equal to 1. You can define it in any way. Your uh, other names are gain bandwidth okay. So uh, what is the value? The range is very higher it should be greater you should have a greater bandwidth approximately equal to 10 kilohertz to 1 megahertz okay so this is your full power bandwidth and the last one is nothing but your slew rate so let me take the last one here seventh one seventh one is called as your slew rate what is meant by slew rate means the rate of change in output voltage with respect to time. So slew rate is equal to del V out divided by del T. Very important parameter. Rate of output voltage with respect to your time in response to your step input signal. Okay. Step input signal. So if this is your input signal V in. Okay. The rate of change of output. So what will be your output during if it is given in the inverting terminal. So you'll be during positive you will be getting negative. But during this transition the transition does not take within fraction of seconds. It depends on a certain time constant. So the rate of change of output with respect to the time is called as your slew rate. Okay. So the slope is nothing but your slew rate. Okay. So these are the seven different parameters. 
So one is your open loop voltage gain, second one is your closed loop voltage gain, third one is your input resistance, fourth one is your output resistance, fifth one will be your input offset voltage, sixth one will be your full power bandwidth and the last one is nothing but your slew rate. So your op amp, uh, the characteristic feature is that the open loop voltage gain should be infinite or very high, input resistance very high, the output resistance should be very less. Okay. These are uh, the important points. To so based on the op-amp parameters, we have the op-amp characteristics. Okay, the op-amp characteristics are. So the first characteristic is, okay, the open loop gain should be high or high open loop gain. Open loop gain. Okay, second one. High input resistance. High input resistance. Third one, low output resistance. Fourth one, full power bandwidth as wide as possible. Full power bandwidth. as wide as possible okay fifth slew rate should be as large okay large slew rate and sixth input offset should be small should be small okay so these are the six op-amp characteristics. So open loop gain should be high, high input resistance low, output resistance, the bandwidth should be greater or wider, slew rate should be large and the input offset should be small. Okay, so if I can make a table, let me compare the ideal as well as ideal as well as real values practical values okay so ideal op amp uh, they all these are the conditions but in practical case it's not uh, possible right so we have the approximation the approximate values will be given so if we take the different parameters so what is the first one it is a voltage open loop gain right open loop voltage gain it is given as a v open loop gain o l so ideal case it should be infinite so practically it ranges in the uh, value from 10 raised to 5 to 10 raised to 6 okay now second one is your input resistance Input resistance should be very high. High means for ideal case it should be infinite. So approximately in practical case it will be nearer to 100 mega ohm. Similarly output resistance. It should be very low right. So ideal case it will be zero. Practically it is around 20 ohm. Then bandwidth. Large bandwidth, right? So again, for ideal case, it will be infinity. Practically, it will be around 2 megahertz. Okay? Then you have the slew rate. Slew, uh, slew rate is also larger. So infinite. So approximately, it is 10 volt per microsecond. It is uh, denoted in volt per second or volt per microsecond. Okay? Unit is. Last one is your input offset. So it should be as small. So practically, sorry, uh, ideally it will be 0. So practically it is less than 5 millivolt. Very small. Okay. So these are the various open loop, uh, sorry, op amp characteristics and comparison of the ideal and the real values. Okay. So the next topic is op-amp configurations, okay?
so after op amp characteristics you have op amp configuration so before going on to this topic op amp configuration we should know the answer of two questions okay so what is question 1 how does an op amp how does op amp operate in operate in open loop condition or open loop configuration the second question is why do we go for negative feedback why do we go for negative feedback okay if we know these two answers then it is easy for us to study the op amp configurations okay so the first question let's move on to the first question how does op amp operate in an open loop condition so let me take the general diagram inverting terminal non inverting terminal so suppose if uh, the two voltages or inputs are v1 and v2 the output will be difference of the both right if av is your voltage gain v1 minus v2 so this is in general the expression you have to supply v plus and v minus okay so generally uh, what what should be the working whatever may be the gain you know that the gain of open loop is very very high it is in the range of 10 raise to 5 okay so your output will be equal to 10 raise to 5 into the difference of the input so suppose here i am giving a voltage of 2 volt and here if i give a voltage of 1 volt so here i am taking dc values because the op amp is uh, a dc coupled amplifier means it amplifies both your ac as well as dc signal so for the example i am uh, taking the dc values for uh, easy understanding okay so uh, what will be your output now 2 minus 1 volt it will be equal to 10 raised to 5 into 1 which is equal to 10 raised to 5 see it is practically impossible to get this output right 10 raised to 5 it is very very high value imagine that you have a dam here okay so this is your uh, dam okay so you have uh, so this is your dam through which your water you will be having your water collecting okay so this is your water so imagine that there is a heavy rainfall okay so during heavy rainfall what your uh, the uh, the water level has raised in the dam let us assume that okay if the water level has raised beyond the certain value or the reference value the shutter will be open why what is the reason so that the dam will not get destroyed just similar to that what happens in an op amp here is once the level of v supply that is if v supply is 12 volt and minus 12 volt once you have the uh, voltage output voltage reaching your supply value then it will get saturated that is if i draw the output wave from v in with respect to that of v out now your output keeps on increasing once it reaches once it reaches your v plus value that is your supply voltage maximum value it gets saturated similarly in the negative direction once it reaches your v minus value here it is v minus okay v minus value it gets saturated okay so always your output will be it, it this can be called as v saturation and minus v sat so always your output will be fluctuating between your v saturation and minus v saturation so this is what happens in your uh, open loop configuration it just acts as a switch okay switch now if you want your uh, ic or your op amp to behave as an amplifier it should work in a linear region so this is called as your linear region okay so that is the reason why you go for negative feedback the gain will be controlled and stabilized so that it will be behaving in a linear region so that you can use it as an amplifier okay now this is the working principle of your open loop configuration so why do we go for negative feedback second question answer to the second question for negative feedback so one answer i have already given it okay in order to work in the linear region in order to work in linear region 
and one of the disadvantage of your open loop configuration is that it can be uh, it has only minimum application uh, like comparators zero crossing detectors etc okay so the utilization is minimized here detector okay so in order to increase the in order to increase the utilization or application of op-amp we go for your negative feedback so there are mainly two two major reasons okay now now let's go on to your different uh, configurations okay so what is your first you are going to study three basic configurations okay So the first configuration is your inverting configuration or inverting amplifier. Your second configuration is your non-inverting amplifier. And the third configuration is your differential amplifier. Okay. So first let's see your inverting amplifier okay so there are two very very important assumption while using a negative feedback okay so what is your first assumption there are two assumptions okay for negative feedback okay so what is your first assumption is that the current flowing towards or away from the op-amp input is negligible or I can approximate it to zero. Similarly, the differential voltage voltage VD okay the difference voltage VD in the input of op-amp is zero these are the very very important two assumptions for example if I take the first configurations configuration as inverting op-amp so what is an inverting op-amp we have seen before your input will be applied across the inverting terminal okay so here rf will be your negative feedback rf and r1 will be your uh, input uh, current limiting resistor so if i apply this v in across this inverting what will be your output output will be equal to minus v in right whatever your gain is av into minus v in. so now you are going to ground your what non-inverting terminal the input will be applied across your inverting terminal. So, if I give here, if this is your input, your output will be your uh, 180 degree phase shift amplified signal. Okay. So, what is the meaning of this two? Uh, these two uh, rules. First rule is that the current flowing towards or away from the op-amp is negligible. That is, no current flows towards or away from the input to the op-amp. So, current is equal to 0 here. I in is equal to 0. Okay. Second, the differential voltage Vd across the input. Vd will be, should be equal to 0. These are the two assumptions. Now, what are your, what is your supply? You have V plus here. You have V minus here. Okay. So, don't worry about your uh, circuit. It's just like you imagine that you have a TV. Okay. TV. To which you can, op-amp will be uh, acting as a TV, to which you can connect your uh, peripherals. Uh, maybe a laptop, mobile, okay, mobile, you can connect, uh, what are the other things you can connect. Uh, maybe your uh, setup box, okay, so that you can increase your application. Similarly, towards the input of the op-amp, you don't have any uh, current or your voltage will be zero. But internally, you have the connection. So, uh, your current flows through your feedback loop. Okay. 
that is a concept now imagine that if i am giving an input of so your gain v0 will be equal to av into v in right so your in your general your equation is given by av is equal to minus rf divided by r in so as per your syllabus you have to study only this formula okay but for your understanding let me derive the formula so as per this formula if i give v input is equal to 1 volt if r1 is equal to 1 kilo ohm and rf is equal to 10 kilo ohm what will be your uh, v out v out will be equal to av into v in right so av is equal to minus rf divided by r in rf is equal to 10 k r1 is equal to 1 k and v in is equal to 1 volt okay so here your k k get cancelled so v naught will be equal to minus 10 volt means what output is inverted okay so let me uh, derive the expression for your understanding it is not uh, needed okay so here what is the concept here is you know that the inverting non-inverting terminal is grounded okay it is grounded here so here there is a concept that is called as since your non-inverting terminal here is grounded so you have zero potential the node if i take this as node a okay node a the node a will will be in virtual ground it is called as virtual ground okay so virtual ground so here also the value will be equal to zero okay now if i apply the uh, kirchhoff current law what will happen so here you have the current i if i take this as current i in current i in will flow through your resistor r1 it will not enter your op amp input right because you have the uh, first rule is applied here so which path it takes it takes the next path okay so your i in will flow through your rf towards your v0 that is your uh, current flow direction so if i write your pitch of current law what will be your value so what will be your uh, current flowing towards the node is equal to the current flowing away from the node i in is flowing towards the node i in is flowing away from the node okay so at node a what will be your expression at node a so your potential difference v in minus v a divided by r1 will be equal to flowing away from the node so v a minus v naught divided by rf you know that it is in virtual ground so va will be equal to zero okay so v in divided by r1 is equal to minus v naught divided by rf okay so can i just reconfigure it v naught divided by v in will be equal to minus rf divided by r in what is your v naught divided by v in which is equal to a v that is your closed loop closed loop means with feedback is equal to minus rf divided by r in this is just for your understanding it is not there in your syllabus derivation is not there so this is the working principle of your inverting amplifier okay now just similar to it you are having a non-inverting amplifier so what is meant by non-inverting amplifier if the input is given to the non-inverting terminal then it is called as a non-inverting amplifier so non-inverting second configuration is non-inverting configuration non-inverting amplifier so what will be your diagram of your non-inverting amplifier so i am going to give the input across your minus plus so what will happen to your inverting terminal it will be grounded okay so this will be your v naught this will be your feedback is still present so here it is your r1 or r in which will be grounded now your inverting terminal is grounded and you will be giving your non-inverting terminal you will be uh, giving your input okay so this is the basic uh, diagram so if you add a resistor you can add a compensation resistor also okay now let me take uh, the uh, output output will be equal to if this is your av which is equal to av into v in now in in case of non-inverting amplifier the closed loop gain is given by 1 plus rf divided by r1 
In the previous case, what was the value? Inverting, it was minus Rf divided by R1. Here in this case, it will be 1 plus Rf divided by R1. So, let me take one, the same example. If I am giving V in is equal to 1 volt, okay? And R1 is equal to 1K and Rf is equal to 10K. Then what will be your V0? V0 will be equal to 1 plus Rf is 10K divided by 1K into your V in is equal to 1 volt. So, 1 plus 10, right? 10 into 1, which is equal to 11 volt. So, you are getting positive. So, if your input is uh, sinusoidal signal, output will be an amplified, but it will be in phase. Okay, if it is positive, your output will also be positive. If it is negative, the output will be also be negative. See, all the examples what I have taken is the DC value. Okay, now. Here also let me uh, uh, go for your derivation which is not there in your syllabus so that but you can understand it. So here it is V in is given to the non-inverting terminal. So here uh, this if I take this as node A, your uh, node A will also be equal to what will be your value? It will be also equal to V in because due to the concept of virtual ground. Okay. Now if I apply uh, the uh, current uh, KCL. Now, what is happening to the current here? There is no input here. There is no current flowing, right? Now, what will happen? A portion of the output is fed. So, here you will be getting your current. Uh, let me take it as IF or uh, current IF. The same current will be flowing through your resistor IF. So, this will be your current uh, direction, okay? Now, if I apply KCL across node A, across node A, what will be your equation now? Your A current flowing towards is equal to current flowing away. Here your current IF is flowing away. Here your current IF is flowing towards. So here let it be I1. Okay. No matter the car, both the current are equal. So if I take the uh, equation then V0 current flow is towards this direction. Right. So V0 minus VA. If I take this as V A or V in, okay. So V naught minus V in divided by R F, which will be equal to V in minus 0 divided by R1, okay. So now you know that uh, what will be your equation? V naught divided by R F minus V in divided by Rf minus V in divided by R1 is equal to 0. So now I can take V in as common. So V0 divided by Rf is equal to if I bring to the other side V in I am taking it as common 1 by Rf plus 1 by R1. Okay. So therefore V0 will be equal to V0 if I bring V in towards this side, will be equal to Rf divided by Rf plus Rf divided by R1. So, A, V, C, L will be equal to 1 plus Rf divided by R1, which is nothing but your this equation. Okay. So, this is the working principle of your non-inverting terminal. Now, your last configuration which you are going to study is your differential amplifier. Okay. So, the third configuration is your differential amplifier. So, in the case of differential amplifier, you are going to give both the inputs. That is you are combining or I can tell that combining the inverting and the non-inverting amplifier together will be giving your differential input. Okay. So, if I take uh, the first uh, diagram of inverting amplifier V0 similar here you will be giving if I take this as V2 now I am going to give the next voltage so uh, here let me take it as R1 and RF similarly here let me take it as your voltage V1 so, the voltage divided by sync is taken for your, uh, to obtain your appropriate output, okay. So, here 
R1 and this is equivalent to your feedback resistor RF. So you have a gain AB. V0 will be equal to AB closed loop gain into your difference of the two signal V1 minus V2. Okay, so it applies the same example applies. Now let me uh, do the derivation. The derivation is not there for your syllabus just for your understanding. Okay, I'm taking. So let me take the two nodes. If this is your node A and if this is your node B. Okay. Now at node A, what will be your equation? At node A, applying KCL. So if I give an input signal here, the current I1 flows through here and it flows through the feedback resistor. So what will be your loop equation? Potential difference V2 minus VA. If this voltage is VA, VA divided by R1. Current flowing towards is equal to current flowing away. So, VA minus V0 divided by RF, right? So, you know that VA, what will be your uh, uh, value of your uh, VA? VA will be equal to 0, right? Due to its virtual ground. Here, the input towards the input, it is equal to 0. So, here you will be having virtual 0. So, VA will get cancelled. V Here also VA will be, VA and VB will be equal to 0 because the voltage towards the input is equal to 0. So, your equation is V2 divided by R1 is equal to minus V0 divided by RF. Okay. So, let me take this as equation 1. Now, let me apply at node B. Node B, when you apply KCL, if I apply the input here, the current flows through it and through your uh, resistor RF. So, if I take this as your current I1 again, same current flows here. Now, what will be your uh, loop equation? V1 minus VB. V1 minus VB divided by R1 is equal to flowing towards is equal to flowing away from the node. Okay. So, VB minus 0 divided by RF. Okay. Here also both will be equal to VB will be equal to 0. So, V1 divided by R1 is equal to 0 divided by RF which is approximately equal to 0. So, now what you have to let me subtract equation 2 from 1. Okay. Since it is a differential amplifier. So, uh, let me subtract both the LHS now. So, V1 divided by R1 minus V2 divided by R1 which is equal to 0 minus of minus V0 divided by RF. Okay. So, I can take 1 by R1 as common V1 minus V2 is equal to V0 divided by RF. So, what will be your V0 is equal to if I take RF towards this side RF divided by R1 into V1 minus V2. So, here your output will be equal to, this is nothing but your A, B, C, L. Closed loop gain is equal to RF divided by R1. Okay. So, RF divided by R1 into V1 minus V2. So, this will be your value of your output voltage. Okay.